Bryce Canyon's Fairyland Trail is one of the most captivating in the entire national park system. And today we're going to cover everything you need to know about this magnificent trail. We'll discuss how to find the trailhead, essential viewpoints to take in, trail conditions to expect, and much, much more. This is Sharing the Road. We're a travel couple looking to share our adventures, insights, and love of travel with you all. So if you haven't yet, please hit that thumbs up button and subscribe to our channel. It takes half a second on your end and it really does help out our channel. If you only have one day to see all there is to see in Bryce Canyon, you should consider the Fairyland Trail. Its path takes you along the spectacular bird's eye views of the upper rim and also winds down through the canyon, offering amazing vantage points to the countless hoodoos that tower overhead. These alternating views and the fact that the Fairyland Trail takes you to some of the most secluded and least crowded sections of the park makes this a one-of-a-kind hike. In fact, when we were hiking, we only passed a few groups of people and we really felt like we had the whole trail to ourselves. The Fairyland Trail itself is a loop, which means that you'll never have to walk back the same way again, keeping the views fresh for each stretch of the hike. The complete loop is roughly eight miles around, which you can expect to take you three and a half to five hours to complete. Due to its length, be sure to bring lots of water, snacks, and sun protection, as the trail is not very covered and as minimal shade as you hike the canyon. The trail starts at Fairyland Point, and there's a small parking lot where 10 to 20 cars can park. However, if the lot is full, you can park at Sunrise Point and hike to the trailhead, as it's not that far away. Once you're on the trail, the path is very well defined and easy to navigate. The path itself is made of red sand dirt, which is easily traversable and soft on the joints. Depending on which way you start the loop, you may start walking towards a rock formation known as Tower Bridge. While you can't walk across the bridge, it's an interesting landmark just a mile and a half into the journey. If you don't want to do the full eight miles of this loop, consider just taking the descent to Sea Tower Bridge, or just walk along the East Rim Trail, which starts at Fairyland Point. This overlooks some of the fantastic sights you'll see on the trail from above. As you continue on the trail, you'll be guided continually up and down the Rolling Canyon walls. This constantly varying elevation grants you some unbelievable perspective at some of the park's most secluded hoodoo rock formations. As you walk through, be sure to find areas along the way to take water and snack breaks is the towering hoodoos make for some spectacular views. So one of the coolest things about the ferry trail loop is you get to see hoodoos that no one else gets to see because it takes you back into this valley. So this is actually behind a wall that kind of truncates it from the rest of the park and it is absolutely stunning. You see way less people and the views are way better. Throughout the hike you'll see many ponderosa pine trees lined in the canyon many towering up to 200 feet tall. These trees can live up to 500 years old, which is nothing when compared to the hoodoos themselves, many of which are 60 million years or older. And while I can't recommend sniffing the hoodoos, while you're walking, one thing you must do if you're visiting Bryce Canyon is to sniff some of the ponderosa pine trees. And while fellow tourists might think you're crazy, the strong butterscotch and vanilla aroma that you'll smell from the tree bark is one of Bryce Canyon's hidden gems. As the Fairyland Loop continues, you'll see many of the park's iconic rocks. The sinking ship, Chinese wall, and Boat Mesa are all visible in addition to the iconic Tower Bridge formation from earlier in the trail. This is a pretty great trail. Eight miles round trip and we're probably about mile three or four right now. One thing to consider when attempting the Fairyland Loop Trail and visiting Bryce Canyon overall is while it looks like a scorching desert, its temperatures actually vary widely due to the altitude. In July, highs can be expected to be in the 80s while lows are in the 40s. We visited towards the end of April and were pleasantly surprised to see snow-covered hoodoos as we started our hike. As the sun came out, the snow did melt the dusting away and we were pleasantly warm for the remainder of the hike. However, in the last 15 15 minutes of the loop, the sun disappeared and it began snowing for a second time. This time snowing the most peculiar snow we'd seen, almost like Dippin' Dots falling from the sky. So if that's not a reason to check the weather before embarking on this eight mile loop, I don't know what is. It is snowing pretty profusely here. So we'll see if we go into the canyon, if we still get some nice snow capped peaks, but um, pretty nice here, right Courtney? Very nice. Really nice. Excited for the day. Absolutely. Like I said, if you only have one day to spend at Bryce Canyon, I'd highly recommend the Fairyland Loop Trail, as its views inside the canyon are unbeatable and its secluded, less visited nature creates a surreal environment you won't want to miss. If this video helped you out, please consider helping us out by subscribing to the channel and liking this video. And be sure to let us know in the comments below what your thoughts are on Bryce Canyon and the Fairyland Loop Trail. See you in the next one.